testing, testing. Can you hear me? We're good to go. You're competing. It's finally peak week. Now here's what you need to know. Hey guys, welcome back to the third edition of My Comp Prep Files. It's Ben Siong from Australian Strength Performance and today I'll be doing a edition of Peak Week. Now, if you have competed before, you will realize that the most important week in competition prep is the last week. This is also known as Peak Week. Now, why is it called Peak Week? So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about this concept of the last probably I would say seven to nine days leading to competition. What are some of the changes you need to expect? Uh, I'll be giving you five of the top things that I would probably look at to change from your normal processes. And how do you dial yourself down for that all important stage moment where everything that you've trained for in the last, you know, three, four, five, six months accumulates into those few seconds on stage where you showcase that physique of yours. So this is peak week. One of the main reasons why I wanted to do this comp prep video is to give you an idea of my personal journey towards this particular competition. Uh, if you have followed my stories on Instagram, you would have realized that prior to the competition, which is this coming Sunday itself, I was actually in Singapore. I just came back over the weekend and I spent six days in Singapore uh, being one of the first international presenters back in a location called Fit Asia where I'm teaching my courses to trainers and coaches. So it was six days of packed teaching, probably teaching eight to nine hours a day. And on top of that, I have to bring in my own training, training and cardio, uh, as well as food prep processes while I'm being overseas. So uh, a really huge challenge for myself. Nevertheless, I saw it as an opportunity to get sharper, uh, to focus my mind on what I needed to do and to come up better on the other side. Now back in Australia, I just came back on Sunday. Today, we're filming this, this is a Tuesday, and this coming Sunday, in five days, or six days time really, is the competition itself. So, this period of time, since I've touched down back into Melbourne, is really my peak week. This represents the period of time which is the most critical time in my entire preparation process because things are about to get hot. These are the, this is the time uh, where I start to change my training style to a degree. I start to change uh, the focus of my eating to a degree. Uh, I also, depending on how my body looks, will start to alter the amount of cardio I put into my workouts. And then over the next few days, I start to manipulate water. I start to manipulate my food. Uh, I got to get my tanning process ready all for that one stage moment. So I'm gonna give you guys an idea about what I consider extremely important, what to look out for in the last seven days, which is really the peak week that we need to look at. Stand there, I think I'm talking too much and it's confusing, so I gotta do this again, I'm sorry. My brain's not working. <laughs> I'm gonna try this again. Yeah. I've just done a take on trying to explain to you how training actually changes, but I completely blanked out. So this is take two, and I'm gonna to attempt to give you an idea of how my training changes in peak week. Now that's my number one variable that I do wanna talk about with you guys today. During peak week, I typically find that my energy levels are very varied throughout the entire day because my calories are low, uh, and I'm doing a range of things with my water as well. So I might get up full of energy, and then through the day, my energy levels kind of go through a peak and a trough, it dips, it goes up again, uh, and sometimes, Literally, I am hearing colors, you know, I, I don't even know what's going on. I just kind of zone out, uh, but that's the way it is with peak week, especially at the start of peak week. Uh, I tend to get a lot clearer towards the end of peak week because calories increase. But for now, how my training changes is that I want to maintain that I don't over push my body during peak week. My loads typically are lighter. Uh, again, I'm not choosing light loads for the sake of choosing light loads. I still go heavy, as heavy as I can go, but the goal is not to injure myself. I choose a rep range between 10 reps and 15 reps, and that's my goal rep range. However, I don't want to push myself until I actually hit failure, nor do I want to over focusize on the eccentric movement, which means uh, the lowering movement. Now, the eccentric movement of a lift 
is the part of the lift where, you know, because you're letting it down slow, you tend to handle more weight and you tend to cause more micro trauma, tear more muscle. During peak week, I don't want so much inflammation. I don't need to tear any more muscle. I just need to maintain the muscle mass that I have. And because of that, uh, my reps are a lot more consistent. They may be a lot faster in that sense. So my tempo is not the main critical uh, consideration here. It's just really movement, keeping that tension, feeling comfortable with that movement, getting blood flow through my body uh, and falling short of that failure rep. You know, if that rep to failure is 15, I probably get about 13 reps. So falling about one to two reps short of that failure. Uh, but just to get the blood flow in, just to make sure I get a good pump. Uh, and also just to look at myself to see how my body will look with a decent pump because this is how I would, you know, mimic or, or look on show day itself. Um, now in terms of exercise selection, uh, if let's say my typical program is based on six to seven exercises, this period of time in peak week is where I actually drop the overall volume. So I don't want to over volumize my workouts because this can actually cause a higher uh, surge of cortisol stress in my body, which can result in muscle mass loss. So I typically will drop my exercises to three to four main exercises that I believe are more beneficial for me at this point of time. Uh, and I will focus on the three, three to four exercises, probably getting at about three sets each or two sets each, each. So you're looking roughly at about 12 sets per workout itself. My workout shouldn't take more than about 40 minutes. And the goal is to really get the blood flow moving in from 10 to 15 reps, stopping short roughly one to two reps prior to failure. So that's how I train in peak week. Again, the goal here is really just to facilitate blood flow and that optimal pump. The second most important factor in peak week and what most competitors will utilize is actually water manipulation. And this is where you will manipulate the amount of water that you drink so that by comp day, your body's actually efficient in flushing out water. Why do you want to flush out water? It's because when you do flush out water from your body effectively, you start to get a really crisp, dry look. This is where competitors would start to appear extremely shredded. This is where the veins are coming out everywhere. The skin is actually paper thin because we store a lot of water under the skin sometimes, uh, subcutaneous water, and you want to be able to flush that out to appear extremely lean uh, on stage itself. That's the look you want on stage. Now remember this look is a transient look. It's not a permanent thing. You're really kind of tapering it in just for those moments on stage where you can appear on stage and look that way. So it's a very transient look. Now water manipulation uh, is really started at about eight days out from show day itself, so during the peak week. And this is where you typically would drink a lot more water. So the body is used to handling so much water and is also used to flushing out a ton load of water at a particular rate. Now, as you, as you move slowly into the competition itself, you will start to see that amount of water start to decrease a few days closer to comp. Uh, and when you start decreasing the water while your body is still at a rate of flushing out water at a really high rate, it will also naturally flush out water to a degree to your body that allows you to lean down and look dry, crisp on stage. And that is kind of how you focus on water manipulation. Now, most competitors will actually utilize water manipulation as a form of getting ready for the stage. I know some competitors don't. They kind of maintain water throughout. These competitors tend to be extremely conditioned uh, prior to the show anyway, so they're conditioned weeks and weeks out of the show. In fact, we'll probably call them competition-ready competitors uh, that may be competition ready three weeks out of the show. So for them, they're just maintaining water. They, they don't need to change anything. They're already paper dry, they're thin, uh, their skin is extremely thinned. And so when they go on stage, that's really all they need to do. So water manipulation is not a must, but it tends to be a technique that is used by competitors to get ready for stage. Now point number three then is actually filling up. As we spoke about point number two, which is water and how water starts off really high. And as you start to get to calm day, you start to drop the amount of water that you drink so your body can flush it out. Filling up is the direct opposite. Filling up means that we need to start loading up the body with carbohydrates because that is important to allow the competitor to look full. So they, what the competitor wants to achieve on stage is a full muscle belly. The muscles need to look round and full but also at the same time, extremely lean and shredded. 
So the fullness is come by filling up. And typically filling up means that while your calories have been dropped leading up to peak week, and the start of peak week may represent the lowest of your caloric counts. As you start to head into competition, maybe the last few days, you will start to find that you may start to load up on specific foods. Now, whether your coach is telling you to do so, whether you're doing so yourself, these foods typically are fat and, pro and uh, carb based. Uh, so fat and carbs. And so depending on the coach, the coach may teach you to load up on an increased amount of fat to begin with because of uh, intracellular fat stores, triglycerides, uh, and then they may follow that up with carbohydrates, which also uh, allow your muscles to fill up and re-glycogenate. Now, the purpose of carbohydrates is really to be absorbed into the muscles, and when carbohydrates are absorbed into the muscles for re-glycogenation, it draws water into the muscle. Now, remember the water that's within your body itself, how you tend to lean out and lose it is when the muscles start to draw the water in as well. So now the water, instead of just staying under the skin, which is subcutaneous, it gets drawn into the muscle itself that expands the muscle so the muscle looks fuller while the skin is actually looking thinner and leaner where the veins come out. So filling up is a process of increasing calories, typically through fat and carbohydrates. Now the method is very dependent on the athlete itself, depending on you know, how the athlete looks, uh, whether the athlete can handle a high amount of fat or high amount of carbs. And this is really based on the discretion of the coach and how the coach wants to give the increased calories to the athletes. But typically, uh, this will happen two to three days out from the, from the competition itself, so the end of peak week, and uh, the amount of calories would be increased from carbs or and fat. So this is gonna be a very specific look that the athlete is looking for, uh, allowing them to look fuller but leaner for that particular show itself and for that time on stage. Point number four that is extremely critical but I think tends to be overlooked is the tanning process. Now why is the tanning process so important and why do bodybuilders look like Oompa Loompas covered in chocolate standing on stage? I think this is probably the most ridiculous uh, sort of tan that you might actually see and you probably make fun of or look at and not understand why. One of the reasons why bodybuilders get so dark and so tan is because we need a particular reflection from the light when it hits the skin. Uh, when the bodybuilder is extremely tan and there is a certain gloss to the skin, when the light hits the skin, you can actually start to see the muscle fibers show up very, very clearly and it gives them a particular aesthetic and a look uh, which is desired. Now bear in mind as well because of the distance on how far the bodybuilder is on stage to the judge, uh, the extra darkness of the tan won't actually show up as though you're standing face to face in front of them. So while they may look a bit absurd, a bit awkward to you, if you're standing close up front, uh, you will start to see that as you are away from a distance and looking at the bodybuilder, they actually appear very good. They appear like, you know, their body looks flawless, like a Greek god. Uh, and that is the purpose of a tan. So tanning has its purpose. And this is where I think a lot of bodybuilders, if you don't find the right person to tan you or don't get the right tan, uh, you may actually lose out in a competition because you don't bring out your assets. You don't highlight how your body actually looks. Now, back in the day, not just was the tanning process quite a bit absurd. Bodybuilders used to use a lot of oil on their skin. Uh, and as we now understand, the oil actually helps to reflect the light to such a degree where it takes off the focus on the detail of the skin itself. So typically with oil products now and oil, uh, we dissuade bodybuilders to use oil if, if possible, maybe a, just a light spray, but typically uh, the, tan, the tan itself will consist of some sort of a sheen uh, rather than using the oil itself. One oil can be quite dangerous backstage. If someone slips on it, they can fall. fall. Uh, but also at the same time, the oil on the skin actually kind of reflects the light in a bad way. So you can actually see how the bodybuilder's muscles appear as they should. Uh, so no oil, we use a good tan, uh, different products for tanning, different tanning solutions. Some of them may use a spray tan uh, from a approved supplier for the competition. Some of them may use a, a, a specific tan, like dream tan, for example, where it's being slapped on the skin. And as you slap it on the skin, there is a, a reaction because you're slapping that person, there is increased blood flow. Uh, so the pinkness of the blood flow together with the darkness of the tan actually brings out a certain look that you want in the bodybuilder that it gives them a sort of a reddish brown appearance when they, you know, when you look at them and that, that could appear quite aesthetic as well. Uh, now, depending on the federation, they will require a certain 
and tan from the athlete. So that's how tanning is done. Uh, tanning is a very important process, which also means that you will need to prep your skin up prior to the tan itself. So bodybuilders typically may exfoliate and start exfoliating uh, during the peak week, making sure that every area of the body is being covered. They may actually go through a, a wax or a, a shave down to get rid of the excess hair so you can actually start to show the muscles. And this is done many days prior before the actual tanning happens. This is just to prep the skin up. Uh, and only on the tanning day itself, when you start to tan, there shouldn't be any sort of moisturizers that's being used because that could actually affect the uh, application of the tan. And then the tanning is actually done. Now this may be done in a single coat or a double coat over two days. So there is a lot of information here. I know as I'm running through this, it's just coming to me at the back of my mind uh, and having prepped so many athletes in different federations, having prepped myself in three different federations, the requirement of tanning is actually very different from one federation to another, again, depending on what the judges are looking for. So make sure that if you are in a competition, understand what the judges are looking for, uh, probably go to a tanning expert that they recommend so that you can get the tan that they desire and that's what they're looking for on stage. Now, the last point, point number five, is actually with regards to gut health. And this can be very important because typically when you see a lot of bodybuilders, especially nowadays, you may find that some bodybuilders have a, a distended gut. Uh, sure, a lot of you may jump to conclusions and go because, it's, because they use you know, growth hormone or steroids or whatever the case is. I'm sure that will play a factor, but a lot of the times it could be attributed to a couple of things. One of them is the large volume of foods that bodybuilders eat. So if you typically a bodybuilder, if they're you know, eating seven meals, eight meals a day, uh, and a large amount of food, their gut can be distended because the rate of digestion and the quality of digestion is being impaired by how much food that they take in. So they're constantly bloated. Uh, secondly, it is also gut health because of the products that they're taking in. Uh, a lot of the shakes and the BCAA powders and all these sort of drinks that they're taking in can actually contain sweeteners, uh, additives, preservatives that can irritate their gut. And I think a lot of bodybuilders may not be aware of how it affects their gut. So for myself during peak week, this is the period of time over you know seven to eight days leading up to the competition that I don't want anything to affect my gut. And this is typically whether I'm doing it for myself right now or I'm telling my athletes is to remove any foods that could have any sort of artificial colorings, flavorings, preservatives, uh, artificial sugar, which is very important, sweeteners, all that kind of stuff that I know could potentially cause bloating, including whey protein as well. So that goes out from the athlete's diet. I watch their gut by keeping in simple foods that they can tolerate well. And I would already know what foods my athletes or myself would tolerate based on the process of prep leading into uh, the last eight days. So I will use the same foods that are non-allergenic, that don't actually cause a reaction from my gut and stick to those foods moving into competition, which also means that on the last two to three days heading up to comp, remember I spoke about filling up the body itself, the muscles itself. This is typically when bodybuilders would eat foods like muffins and sugary foods to kind of fill up the muscles uh, with high GI foods and sugars. I'm very cautious of that as well because I know that if the athlete or myself has not been exposed to these foods, heading up to the, uh, leading up to the competition, this could actually cause some sort of, you know, a bloating or reaction from my gut. So. I stay on the cautious side. I stick to foods that I know I can tolerate, such as rice cakes, rice, jams, for example, uh, nut butters that I know I can tolerate, keeping things extremely simple heading up to comp. All I need is to increase the volume so I know I can react to absorbing those carbohydrates. Now, if I wanted my pizzas, my muffins, all that kind of stuff, I'd rather play the safe route and have it after the competition where I can enjoy myself rather than you know a few days out from the competition where I'm taking that and I, I'm getting bloating, which I can't get rid of by the competition itself. So remember, if you, are, if you are focusing on gut health at this point of time, now is the time to do that. Make sure that you are focusing on the right foods. Be smart about it. Don't just think that, oh, because I'm fueling up, I can deserve you know, more sugar or this and that, because that could actually stuff up your entire process. So imagine you know, you're prepping for five months, six months for the competition, and in the last two days, you've completely stuffed up your physique by storing water inflammation, by choosing foods that you may not be tolerant to just because you've seen someone do it. So be aware of your gut health. I would also suggest things like enzymes, suggest things like HCL, 
uh, which is hydrochloric acid. And I, I typically take hydrochloric acid and enzymes with the regards to the digesting of my, my foods and my meals, just to make sure it's easy on my gut uh, and that I'm fully absorbing and assimilating the nutrients that I'm taking in. So again, more of a holistic approach towards bodybuilding the last seven days, uh, but this has worked for me and every one of my athletes that I've prepped at a very good level. Uh, and I think, again, the main thing here is not to muck anything up. So there you go, here are the five points that I think are extremely important for peak week. We talked about training. We talked about manipulating water in a right way where you are dropping a large amount of water to less. Then we're talking about filling up, which is point number three, and increasing your calories for a specific purpose to allow your muscles to look full. We then delved into the last two points, which is learning to obtain the right tan because they can actually highlight, accentuate your best features that you've prepared so hard for. And the last one is gut health. Also probably my most important point, making sure that you have a healthy gut and healthy gut function moving into competition because that would allow your tummy to be flat. And if you're gonna be doing a vacuum, for example, that is the best way to allow you to do a vacuum rather than allow your gut to bloat up. Now, if I may, I also want to add in a last point, which is the importance of posing so you can call this a bonus point really and understand that your posing may actually change in the last seven days because as more muscle fibers start to show uh, as more of your your highlights of your body start to show for example your shoulders may appear more round because you are leaner more water is flushing out you may actually want to change your poses because it can highlight your body again in a different light that is more beneficial to yourself so Make sure you put these points into practice. Enjoy your peak week, guys, because this week I know, like right now, I'm a little bit fuzzy, but this is the time where everything comes together uh, and it will pass just like that. So if you don't enjoy it, it's probably be too late to kind of look back at it after competition and go, wow, you know, I really should have enjoyed that period of time, understanding my body better uh, and really getting ready for comp. Now guys, if you have benefited from this information, please put a like below, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly grateful for you guys for watching this and uh, I will see you in our next episode. It won't be about comp, but it will be about something that you guys can take away. We'll see you then. That's it. That's a wrap.